a message to church leaders, let my people go. Most Christians think that today's pharaohs are political leaders and or, with the COVID disaster, health officials and scientists who put restrictions on people through mandates. Not so from God's perspective. Who really is holding the church captive? Church leaders for many decades have put God's people to sleep through motivational speeches and ear-tickling messages of half-truths. Read 2 Timothy 4, verses 3 and 4. Selective Bible readers, they falsely depicted the God of the universe as a type of Santa Claus, or the eternal vending machine where we throw in a quick prayer and out should come the blessing. And while promoting seeker sensitivity instead of being sensitive to Holy Spirit, free coffee and cookies, professional band performances with light shows and smoke machines quickly became the progressive way of doing church. Turning the church into a powerless feel-good social club, she lost her light and salt in a progressively darkened world. While running after worldly things, these modern leaders clearly failed to teach that, besides being gracious and merciful, our God is a consuming fire who must be respected. It certainly isn't easy to talk about the fear of the Lord and the importance of repentance and a humble disposition in an environment created for comfort. Read Proverbs 1, 7 and 9, 10. Who are these modern church leaders, and who are the goats addressed by Jesus on the day he judges the nations? Are they not people who think they have served him? In Matthew 7, verse 22, we read the following. Many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name, and in your name drive out demons, and in your name perform many miracles? Then I will tell them plainly, I never knew you. Depart from me, you workers of lawlessness. That which was meant to be a calling into ministry, Jesus called the twelve, was turned into a career choice with a degree and then a paycheck and a pension plan. Soon churches became business enterprises with building programs, properties, and employees. And since the venture was a charitable one, eligible for a tax break, the church ended up under the rule of secular governments. But instead of teaching their congregations about an invisible enemy, Satan and his demonic spiritual forces, Revelation 12, many leaders taught and seen in their own lifestyles, that it is okay to love the world with all of its enticements. James 4, verse 4, You adulterous people, don't you know that friendship with the world means enmity against God? Therefore, anyone who chooses to be a friend of the world becomes an enemy of God. Meanwhile, Satan's influence kept growing in all parts of society, our schools, media, movie industry, and the political arena. But instead of teaching how to fight such an enemy, many leaders promoted to stay out of politics and obey your government. However, the battle is a spiritual one, not against people, and must first be won in the spirit realm before we will see any manifestations in the natural. Only spirit can fight spirit. Our carnal weapons of the flesh are useless in such a battle. Nothing without Holy Spirit. 2 Corinthians 10, 4 Dear brothers and leaders in the church, please wholeheartedly turn to God while it is still time. And please remember that friendship with the world means being God's enemy and that wanting to be popular and loved by everyone stands in opposition to God's word. Luke 6.26 What sorrow awaits you who are praised by the crowds? For their ancestors also praised false prophets. It is better to be a thorn in Satan's eye and a challenging voice to the people of God than to be a lukewarm drink in the heat of battle. Revelation 3.16, But since you are like lukewarm water, neither hot nor cold, I will spit you out of my mouth. 
It is not too late to give back to God what was His in the first place, the Church. I believe that the revival of the Church revived in her first love will be the catalyst that will initiate the greatest soul harvest the world has ever seen. But as I have written in the 2003 prophetic book, Awakening the Sleeping Giant, The Church and the Road to Revival, the road to revival is paved with many prayers of a deep and true repentance. And if God's people repent, he promises to heal their land. 2 Chronicles 7.14 Jonah the prophet proclaimed God's word of warning. In Jonah 3, verses 5 to 9, we read the following. The Ninevites believed God. A fast was proclaimed, and all of them, from the greatest to the least, put on sackcloth. When word reached the king of Nineveh, he got up from his throne, took off his royal robe, covered himself with sackcloth, and sat in ashes. Then he issued a proclamation in Nineveh. By the decree of the king and his nobles, let no man or beast, herd or flock, taste anything at all. They must not eat or drink. Furthermore, let both man and beast be covered with sackcloth, and have everyone call out earnestly to God. Let each one turn from his evil ways and from the violence in his hands. Who knows? God may turn and relent. He may turn from his fierce anger so that we will not perish. Let us turn to God in repentance for the healing of the nations. Amen. Ready or not, here I come. No, really, what about the church? In a nutshell, we will not be able to go back to the way things used to be because the hour is late. The generation of Israel becoming a nation in 1948 will not pass away before all is fulfilled. Matthew 24:34 and Psalm 90, verse 10. It's either hell on earth, global government control, or true repentance, and then God's Spirit is poured out. Joel 2:28, with revival breaking out worldwide, initiating the greatest soul harvest in the history of the world. Then the rapture, the sudden snatching away of true followers of Jesus Christ, his bride, into the clouds for a seven-year wedding celebration. 1 Thessalonians 4.17 Choose you this day whom you will serve, Joshua 24.15 But beware, these people honor me with their lips, but their hearts are far from me. They worship me in vain, Matthew 15.8 the Lord does not look at the things people look at. People look at the outward appearance, but the Lord looks at the heart. 1 Samuel 16, 7. Please watch the YouTube video by Amir Sarfati, the generation that shall not pass away. Amen.